Hello and welcome back to the channel. Thank you for joining me in another of my wonderful interviews. Have you ever looked up at the sky when they're obviously not spraying them with uh, geoengineering and the chemtrails and especially at night time seeing all the twinkly stars and thought what does all that mean? Is there some, some meaning when the stars come together? Maybe you're one of those people that goes to the newspapers if you still read them and look at the horoscope to find out what's in stall for you talking about astrology and what it can mean for us. And it's something that I know very little about. So I'm very thrilled to say today I have Anna Isabel, who is going to help us with uh, the uh, introduction to astrology and where we are in this current time of difficulties. She's not only an astrology astrologer, she's also an analytical hypnotist. Um, Isabel, welcome to the show. It's lovely to have you on the show. Hello, Richard. I'm a bit nervous now because um, I know you said before we started that uh, you'd like to have my um, my chart or my birth date and things like that, and uh, which was slightly worrying because I thought, oh, what if you see things which are going to be troubling for me? Um, and so I haven't actually as yet given it to you. So maybe at the end of this, I will be a bit more um, trusting. It's not that I'm really trusting, but um, astrology. Yes. Yes. Um, I've had all sorts of people on the show and it's been fantastic. I watch a little bit of Pam Gregory, who yes. perhaps a number of my viewers will know. Um, and she recently has been talking about the troubling times and some of the problems that we have had, but actually things are going to get better, although it may be a lot of turbulence. Um, so I'm hoping that you can help us paint a picture for what might happen to us, but also give us an insight to your type of astrology and how you interpret everything out there. So I am what is known as a psychological astrologer. There are different branches of astrology, right. which means that we specialize in different aspects. So some people will um, specialize in what's called horary astrology, which is a more of a divinatory <laughs> art. And it's to do with uh, the question of the moment. So if you ask me, and I do this if I've lost something, um, if I'll ask, okay, where is such and such? And I'll draw up a chart for the moment when the question is asked. And then I will answer that, I will use the chart to answer the question. And I, yes, I have found things that I have lost using this, um, this technique. Other people will specialize in medical astrology. Um, which is a way of getting behind some of the symptoms that people might be experiencing. Oh, okay. And there's very few of us doing this. And uh, the, the, I think I can think of two off the top of my head. And they are both herbalists, so they have medical training. Right. So and they can and so so exactly. So they're they're bringing that. But you know, once upon a time, uh, all doctors would have used astrology. So this is a very ancient use. Yes. But um, in the latter part of the 20th century, uh, a movement to use astrology from a psychological perspective to understand what what's at the heart of the person. By the way, we did not invent this. This was done a long time ago because psychology really uh, astrology is really ancient psychology. So this, this has been the case. Yes. It's just that some of us are focusing on that to help people develop self-awareness and um, perhaps heal different aspects of them themselves and understand their, their loved ones. So what's, what's interesting is a lot of these old um, disciplines, I suppose you might call it, um, are coming into the fore again. And it seems to me from a lot of the reading that I've done, is that we've gone through a period in the last 100, 150 years where science has become the new guru and people have jumped on that because it sounded sensible but actually it seems that we have lost our way a bit by, and we've seen that with recent times where we continually hear things like we're following the science only turns out the science is completely wrong. Um, and so some of these older bits of wisdom is filtering back that we should really be taking more notice of. Absolutely. And I think that um, where this element of science, really, which is scientism, um, it, 
is very limited in its perspective. There are other branches of science which are actually looking at the quantum side of the world and looking at quantum energy and it's bearing out the things that people have known for centuries but we didn't have the scientific language to understand and i think right. you know in large part this is also an element of of language that we have become used to looking at the world in a particular with a particular scientific language which is based on cause and effect and is just very linear in its thinking and wants everything replicated in the lab. Now, I can cook the same dish three times and it will be different every time. I can't You're even not replicate. The only one. Exactly. I can we do can't, the same. you know, we're not, we as human beings can't be replicated in the same way that when people come to me uh, for hypnotherapy, they say, How many sessions will I need? Well, I really don't yes. know. I can tell you averagely. But it depends on so many things because everyone is unique. Yes. And so this is this is the limitation of that perspective. We've seen that um, in medicine, particularly where one size does not fit all. And again, referring back to the big event a few years ago, and then the the that the speed of light, a certain medication was prescribed for everybody in the world, and and so rapidly not tested and all of those sort of things but it's just that idea that this one thing will fit everybody from every different work of um, walk of life and tradition and custom i mean it's madness to think that we're all basically the same machine exactly and and i think that's the limit of the materialist materialist world view right but there are other ways of perceiving the world in one in which everything is interconnected and we know, for example, that plants communicate with each other chemically underground. Yes. Um, we never knew that. We know that now. We also know that they release certain chemicals, which also serve to communicate. We never knew that. We know that now. Yes. So it's being open to the possibility that, or being humble enough as human beings to understand that we don't understand everything quite yeah and what doesn't appear to make sense on the surface actually may have some depth behind it and astrology is one of those disciplines and it is so old really it's it's based on um our experience so it's experiential and going back to Babylonian times when they were looking at the sky and they were looking, you know, every time there's a comet, this thing happens. And every time that um, that planet over there, oh, you know, does this, then this happens. Is that is that real? Or how long has that been happening? And then there's a pattern. So it's about recognizing the patterns. So from our perspective, at in our time, we actually have quite a body of reference yes. to go back on and and see and sometimes it looks like we're reliving the past um, all over again and if you look at it from the astrological perspective at the patterns that are being created with the planets then you can see that there is a link and you go oh that's interesting so for example at the moment Pluto has just gone into the sign of Aquarius. So, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about Pluto, and then I'm going to tell you about Aquarius, and then I'm going to put it into a historical context. Right, okay. And, and you're going to see what I mean. So Pluto is the god of the underworld, and he generally wears an invisible helmet when he comes up in, so that he can't be seen. And the meaning that or the experience that we associate with Pluto is about things that have been underground suddenly coming up to the surface. Is that is that good or bad? Or so a mixture of in astrology, we 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 try to be neutral and right. say this is the observation. Okay. So I'm just the observation is sounds, it doesn't you know, sound nefarious. too good, right? No, yeah. it, exactly. And and think if you think about it, that's what it is. So. Now, when it, it's just gone into Aquarius, the last time that it did this was at the time of the 
American Revolution, closely followed by the French Revolution. Oh, wow. Okay. So, so big troubling times. Okay, big change. Political... Big, big change. Yes. So why would that be? Yes. So to do that, we have to see that revolutions happen as a reaction. They don't just happen. No. They are in a reaction to something. So if we go back to before Aquarius, we have Capricorn. And Capricorn is a sign that is to do with social structures. It's to do with social institutions. It's to do with authority. Ah, uh, right. Okay, so now, whenever, wherever Pluto is, he tends to want to become more controlling of. So Pluto likes to control. And so whilst it was in Capricorn, we had prior to the revolutions, serious abuses of the population by those who were in power. That's why the revolution happened. Right. Okay. And if you look back at the, the stuff that was happening in the American colonies at the time, you understand that they were reacting against injustice as they saw it. So there was the slogan, no taxation without representation. So it begins as a tax revolt in a sense because of the Boston Tea Party. Gosh, and we're, we're having a bit of a tax revolt at the moment. I mean, so, so much just, I'm talking about is council tax. And... Just, think, just, just think about that. No taxation without representation was one of the slogans. Um, they were also being forced to house um, military so the so that the British troops coming in, um, you as an American citizen, or actually let's not call them American citizens because they didn't exist at the time. And we right. know that there's a whole issue with citizenship that we don't want to get into yeah. right now. But you as an American colonist were obliged to open your house to give a home to the invading <laughs> That well, you might have perceived as an invading army, okay? Yeah. So there was a whole host of things. So this is the the government of the time right there in their homes. And they just went, no, that's not what's going to happen. Stuff was happening in France too, of course. Yes. And um, the, can I say, the wind of revolution was being felt in this country too. Yeah, because I mean, just reading in history, you could see that they were getting worried when the French Revolution. They were very was, worried. Because they didn't want to lose their heads, the aristocracy. Exactly. And they had just lost the American colonies as well. Yes. So this is the lead up to the Pluto in Aquarius. So the, the American Declaration of Independence actually happens whilst Pluto is in Capricorn, right at the end, which is exactly where Pluto has been right now with all the trouble that has been happening. So it's that 250 year cycle coming back to America and that point in which they declared independence being touched again and all the same issues being brought up to the point where we know that, I think it was on January the 6th that there was an American journalist who mentioned the Boston Tea Party and was arrested for mentioning the Boston Tea Party. Gosh, well, so good. this is not say it then. this is huge, isn't it? Because yeah. it's you're seeing that repetition right at the point at which Pluto comes back to the point where it was at the American Declaration of Independence. And now it's going into Aquarius, which is revolution time. It's where the, those revolutions happened. And I do remember that I think it was last year that there was, if it wasn't last year, it was the year before, that there were certain um, parts of the Marseillaise that were basically being banned from being sung because the French were singing, the, the French who were protesting against what was happening mm. were singing the Marseillaise and those lyrics were basically banned. Gosh. So you see that that repetition again. So you have this overreach, this clamping down, and it's the authorities. So this is top down government weighing down and the and what's down at the bottom going, uh, no, <laughs> thank you very much. We've had enough We've of you lot. Enough, yeah. um, so 
this is what's happening right now. Pluto is started last year. And now let's talk about Aquarius. Mm. Because Aquarius is a sign that is about unity, about humanity. It's very much about the collective. The symbol is the water bearer. And people will see that there's somebody holding water and pouring it down. So there's lots in this symbol. I'm just going to do a thumbnail sketch. But that water is, is meant to be sweet water, which is about the refined aspects of humanity. So the ideals, but there are meant to be ideals that are a benefit for all. So this is very linked with grassroots and grassroots movements. And my goodness, are we seeing that? And, and just, I mean, just on that, which may be completely irrelevant, but water is something that a lot of people are talking about at the moment because they're aware of the, not just fluoride going in the water, but a whole load of other heavy metals and things. There's more to come on that. On that. Oh, right. So, yeah. yeah. So, so that's synchronicity just in, in exactly. and of that. And, and here we have, uh, this is an air sign. So each of the signs pertains to different elements. So this is an air sign. And so this is about ideas and ideals. Now, obviously, the challenge for, for, for those who are wanting to create a new world, mm. we have to remember always that we're in the mess we're in because one man's uto utopia is somebody else's hell. Yes. And we've been down this road before. And when we talk, when we use that word collective, etc., we know the perils because we've seen that before. And Aquarius has been linked with other revolutions, the Russian revolution as well. The problem is when we don't have heart in what we are doing, when we allow our intellect because there is an arrogance to the intellect where we, be, we think we know best. Yes. And so if we allow that to permeate and corrupt the ideals that we are holding, then we are not going to create the new, a, a new world. Right. We have to be, we have to watch ourselves. And do we ever learn that? I mean, these cycles have gone round. Do we ever learn that um, we, so that we can hold on or, or is it inevitable that we'll go through the, the repeat cycles as the planets move in around? Nothing is ever the same. Nothing is ever the same. And I'm sure that you're aware that any attempt to make changes, there is a huge feeling that this must be done peacefully. Yes, yes. Um, Most definitely. And, we, and it's not just that we, we have, people haven't got the choice because um, the people are basically outweaponed, yes. if we can put it that way. Um, it's not just that. It's, it's so not that. It's because genuinely in people's hearts, they believe that that way is the old way. And the new way is something closer to Gandhi. And, you know, it's, it's got to be us uniting in a, a higher, with a higher, I, a higher frequency so that we can meet that ideal. Mm. So I think that, yes, I am hopeful. I am hopeful because I think this is about the evolution of our collective soul. Right. Yes. I mean, people are telling me all the time that this is a very important time to be alive, not just because it's revolution, but actually that the earth is is going through uh, a massive change because of the, because of the fact that we don't seem to have learned much. We we haven't. We haven't. I think that there is a hardcore group of people who have not learned much. And I think that the rest are not wanting to repeat the mistakes of the past, but can be manipulated into repeating the mistakes of the past. Oh, right. So we have to, you know, be cognizant of that. So that takes us into the realm of Neptune, okay. because Neptune, god of the sea, um, it's all about feeling, and it's 
both of these planets that I've talked about are symbolically about the subconscious and subconscious drives, but they're also, everything I'm talking about is about, these are collective um, trends, if we can put it like that. So Neptune in Pisces, he went into Pisces um, in 2011, 2012. I'm just looking at my notes here because I, sometimes numbers just don't stick in my head. Yeah, um, but same yeah, with me. Yeah, it was 2011, 2012, about that time. And there, he's going to be there pretty much um, until 2025, 26. That, then there's a bit of a shift. But Pisces is... So he's been in Pisces and Pisces is his natural realm because it's water and God of the sea and the fish. So he's very comfortable in this particular sign. And the symbolism of Pisces is um, empathy, feeling, um, no boundaries. And its ideal, its highest ideal is spiritual unity and connecting with divinity. So oneness, that's right. the word I want. It's oneness. Now, we've seen that with Pluto and Aquarius, is this idea of revolution. And I've said there are challenges with that because Aquarius is also very linked with technology. And we have idealized technology, particularly since the digital revolution. Oh, yes. When Neptune, which is also about ideals, was in Aquarius, a sign to do with technology. So it's like we've fallen in love with it and ignored the CCTV and ignored everything because of the convenience yes. of the, that technology brings us. Pluto going into Aquarius is going to bring all of that into the stop spotlight because technology has evolved with, you know, it's on steroids, isn't it? Yes. And AI, well, hmm. Um, so we've got all of that that's been going on and we have to, as Pluto goes into Aquarius, our biggest challenge, I think, is going to be to hold on to our humanity. Yes. Well, I, so, I mean, I would certainly agree with that. And I think the messages that I get from the audience watching is they're generally worried about the advance of technology and the push ever more to go digital with the threat of the digital IDs. Well, and CBDs. what Pluto does is it... It holds a spotlight on our collective obsessions. And as they become more extreme, it's that it's what's coming up to the surface. We then have to deal with that and make decisions as to what we're going to do. So so that is so, for example, when Pluto went into Capricorn in 2008, I remember saying to my students, just watch what we're going to get. Firstly, in fact, it was before, it was around 2006 when I was teaching, saying this is what's going to happen. Watch a collapse for the collapse of the banks, you know, and watch it get to the point where it feels like capitalism is eating its tail. Mm. Well, you know, <laughs> recent history, yeah, I think. Absolutely, yeah. Recent history well, we would bring that. We had the collapse, didn't we? We had the collapse almost that, immediately. Yeah. In 2008. So, so the challenge here then is going to be those ideals that we've held with technology have we got the wisdom so neptune coming back to neptune because of that whatever we idealize if we don't have the wisdom to understand we are going to get into very deep waters and there comes confusion the idea of boundlessness and boundaries well have we got any boundaries anymore can somebody tell me please so when you when you say that you mean boundaries on all sorts of moral of boundaries, all sorts of exactly the whole woke agenda oh, oh i'm actually i'm talking about literally, literally our borders our borders oh right our okay. borders because in that time since neptune has gone into pisces we have seen the increasing dissolution of our borders yes so when we're talking about boundaries, it's boundaries at every level. And so it's and it's the confusion because there's what we thought was right. But what we thought was right, we're being told we are evil for thinking. Right. There's um, so th and so there there we have again, because Pisces is also linked with um, hypnosis. Ah. And there's been lots of talk about mass hypnosis. Yes. And, you know, the, the public. And we do know, and I, as a hypnotherapist, recognize that there has been a very careful 
and planned campaign to persuade people to believe things that they might otherwise not have believed. And that has been the idea of social programming and uh, well, we actually have, it's, it's odd record. We have a nudge unit that is yeah. there to influence the public with carrot and stick to doing what they want, what the, the powers that be decide is in our best interest. So that is Neptune in Pisces. But on the plus side, there's also the, the rise of the notion of um, emotional intelligence and intuition and spirituality of different kinds. There seems to be a resurgence of Christianity, which worries many people and for others seems quite a natural thing. Yes. So there's this, at the moment, there's this confusion of possibility. But one thing that I think is really important is that I have never in my life heard more people talk about spiritual ideals of peace and of raising consciousness and raising frequency. This is Neptune at his best. The rest is the shadow side. Right. And we have to deal with the shadow always. But I think that is a very beautiful aspect of it. And now, I mean, I can talk anecdotally um, that on my YouTube feed, and maybe it's because YouTube is an echo chamber and we all have our interests and then pop up all these videos, but I get loads of spiritual videos and so many people, um, Dolores Cannon videos and people have taken her words and made channels based on just what she said and various other people. And some scientists now are moving over. Bruce Lipton, for example, is, is talking very much in that sort of vein based on the biology that he has explored. Uh, uh, the question I wanted to ask you, though, is, and, and you're, you're right, you're, you know, we're seeing more grassroots units talking about growing things and doing all that. Is the, the, the planets moving and where we are affecting everybody? Because there's still yes. a big... Yes. Um, mass number of people who are unkindly, people say, asleep, but seem to be realizing there's something wrong, but they may not fully go with all the the long list that you and I could probably give them. Um, because I think one of the problems that we have sitting here as a, as a YouTuber and other YouTubers and other people who are awake to agendas that have been planned is it's very difficult to get that message across a sort of dissonant co cognitive barrier. That's a whole, whole um, conversation. But I would say this, in the context of Neptune in Pisces, confusion can reign. And if you have trusted sources of information that are presenting you with what they are saying is a fact, and then you have somebody who is presenting you with counterfacts because uh, because they're not the trusted person, yeah. which fact are you going to choose? Even if your heart is telling you that this makes sense, so you're, still you're, believing asking, the BBC. you're asking them to believe something that they're not sure of where they have always invested their trust somewhere else. Yes. And so this is... Um, the Neptune in Pisces symbolism also could be about the fact that the mind is the, the battleground at the moment. Right. Because... So a you, spiritual battle is... I it's, mean, a, that's, it's a spiritual battle. And I don't like to use that word battle in the context of Pisces and Neptune. But for us, that's how we're experiencing it because people have referred to it as information war. But it's not it's not information war because that's about facts and we're taking it as a given that people are just going to believe facts no they believe facts in the context of what they are being told by who yes who do you believe and that is absolutely neptune par excellence because neptune is always going to ask the question what's real and what's not real so if if, say, the BBC 
started to broadcast the sort of content that you and I put out um, and, and many others and actually was telling the truth as much as we know it, the vast majority of people would go, oh, Oh well, that's all right. Maybe those can... who those who still watch yes. mainstream media, and that's declining in number. But what's happening is that although there's a huge number of people who are not tuned into mainstream media, they have not. They're lost. They don't know where else to go for information, right. and they are still in that mindset. So they're still going to hear what's going on through mainstream media in the same way that they're going to hear what's going on through alternative media, but they don't know where to go. And I had a friend recently say to me, I don't know, what, I don't believe anything anymore. Mm. And I thought, well, that's good because that's the beginning potentially for critical thinking. But that is another step to take. So, so yes, this is the, ro you know, the realm of Neptune and Pisces, what's real. Who do you believe? Who don't you believe? Yes. And, and that's interesting from my point of view, because um, I'll be at events or, or see somebody and, and every now and again, somebody will say, oh, Richard, I think you're a shill or I don't think you're telling the truth or whatever. Now, of course, there's no way I can convince them and I don't try because what's the point? Um, they will either resonate with what I do and, and if I turn around and tell them to take their boosters then that perhaps they would know what I was. I'm never likely to say that because I don't believe in that sort of thing. Um, but I get what you're saying about people effectively throwing their hands up in the air and going I'm confused, I don't know who to trust. That's because right. on the one hand the BBC may have been all the way through their life a trusted source and yet they seem to be saying something which goes in, you know, intrinsically or, or deep within them that's not quite right. But there's so much noise elsewhere. It's a beautiful energy, Pisces energy, but it can be very confusing. Mm. And we are all undergoing a, a process of change. Um, you, you've done yours very rapidly. Mine, you know, it was it was the masks the mask mandates, I was already uncomfortable. I was already recognizing certain things. Uh, you know, as a hypnotherapist, you can't not, you know, the, this is obvious. Um, you isolate people. Why would you want to, you know, you know, all of that that goes on. And then the masks came and I thought, oh, that's a deepener. Mm. That's, that's a deepener. And they're not wanting people to relax and think everything is going to be okay. Okay, all my suspicions now. So we all have those moments. Um, so, it, but this is, again, that, that journey, that personal journey that we're all on, where we have to work out for ourselves what's happening and, and how, how to make sense of things that make no sense. So this is, again, Neptune in Pisces. Now I'm going to add another planet in Pisces. Just before you do, I just wanted to ask, we have gone through a series of so-called crises in the past, I'm thinking in the mid 80s, we saw Chernobyl, we had AIDS that was, you know, these things, that, so the nuclear thing was coming along. And then we had another dangerous something that turned out not to be quite what it was. Um, these, thing, uh, these things keep coming and yet we still just believe in them. Not to the extent that we did once before. This is where it's it's interesting because I find I, I have found through with Neptune that through the fog light begins to shine. Right. So when when you're it's it's like the well, you know, the little boy who cried wolf. It seems that certain people haven't heard that story. Yeah. And that's what's happening is that people are beginning to understand that they're being lied to. They don't know quite what to believe yet, although some of us, you know, some people do. Yes. Um, but some people don't know quite what to believe yet, but they know that they're being lied to. Yes. And that is massive. That's and a massive shift. And it's very frustrating shift. for those that know and can see it, you know. Yes. It's, but it seems to a number of people so bleeding obvious. We that... have to respect other people's 
processes and boundaries and that's yes. really really hard particularly as Neptune is in Pisces however right. I'm going to add another one because yes, you were asking about water yes and Saturn is also in Pisces now Saturn is interesting because he is all about restriction and control so when we first became aware that something was very wrong was January 2020 and the, there was a um, a combination that happened between Pluto and and Saturn where they sat in the same sign in Capricorn. So remember what I said about control top down and Jupiter also joined in. I'll talk about Jupiter in a minute, but Jupiter amplifies everything. So there's this exaggerated control of really like the noose around everyone. So you could in in different parts of the world. We were lucky here by comparison yes. because people couldn't literally could not leave their homes. Yes. Um, to walk their dogs in places even. So it was it, absolutely, that noose was very, very tight. So are, are you just, uh, just to interrupt there, are you saying, even though we know um, that this was a nefarious thing that was planned, I think most people are sort of will go along with that, certainly the, the, the audience watching this, but are you saying that because the planet's moving there, it would be inevitable that these things would happen? Oh, which came first, the chicken or the well, egg? That's, that's what you're yeah, asking, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so, oh, you're going to hear different astrologers with different views on that one. Um, what might be true is that there, we are not the only people who know astrology. So, although astrology has been poo-pooed officially, it is a fact that many people no astrology and will engage in what's called electional astrology which is using the using astrology to plan events so, so oh so timetables can be put together saying we have to do this then this is the good moment to, max, to do that to maximize, to maximize. Yeah. yeah and this is you know it's perfectly fine but of course you know you could use it for good or ill Eggs, right you know and we do know that astrology is used by lots of people who were in a position to uh, create certain um, situations so that we yes. can we can leave it at that yes. so it so although I can't answer your question because it's a chicken and egg no. question but and I, different I, people so have another, different so views in other words, if 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 there weren't the nefarious people that may have or may not have orchestrated things and the event that happened that got people in their houses if the government had taken the stance what we must do now is look at how we um how we eat we eat highly processed food let's rule that out because this is a health issue so let's make sure we give people organic food let's clean up the water let's clean up the skies let's get people exercising let's get them doing breath work let's you know so if instead of isolating uh, putting on masks getting people eating fast food not being able to hug one another if they did the opposite of what they had done th people would have done it because the maybe maybe because remember this is about force right And, and I mean, that it would have been beneficial, of course. It would have been if, beneficial, if done that, but, but it's all about the intention and how it's done. Right. Because really, what we're talking about, this setup is about control. So, well, if you, you may have the best intentions, now you, you, you will have experience of this. You, you know, you have a friend, and you could see that they're doing something that is really, really bad. Yeah. It's going to be destructive and detrimental to their well being. Oh, you're like a an you're, alcoholic or something yeah, like that. And, and you're a father. So you've had children. You've been in this place, oh, yes, right? In this yes, situation. Yes. Okay, so let's take parents, right? This is the best analogy. Take parents. They can see their children. Oh, you know, and if they try to force yes. their children, what's going to happen? Yeah, they're going to do the opposite. Even though you know and your intentions are good and you know that you are right, It's the, this is the, the idea. So that triple conjunction that happened between three powerful planets, all in the area to do with government. Right. That's what it's about. So it doesn't matter what they did at that time. It's the force that's wrong. Right. Oh, okay. It's the force. What I say that the force, the force that's wrong. And what I mean by that, it's 
it's the force that's going to create the reaction, yes. which comes with Aquarius. But Saturn currently, so I was just reminding everyone of what Capricorn is about. Um, and Saturn is at home in that world. He is all about control, limitation, restriction. And now he's in the area of Pisces and Pisces, fish, water. And I, I was just recalling this morning that almost on cue, when Saturn went into Pisces, there was the documentary that came out that's called It's in the Water. Oh. And I remember at the time thinking, oh my word, you know, it's... They're so, good planning. <laughs> yeah, well, so maybe they, they, did. maybe they did. Yes. But the, tr the truth of the matter is that whether or not we plan it, these things happen naturally. They're natural synchronicities that occur. And I have heard so much about water since Saturn's been in Pisces. Flooding. And what was it this morning? I heard in, I think it's British Columbia. The farmers in British Columbia are protesting en masse. And one of the reasons they're protesting is because they are flooding good agricultural land. The government's flooding. Yeah. Yeah, the obviously. Government, not the farmers. Not the farmers, no. no. The, the government of British Columbia is, is flooding the land so here we are saturn government water how is water being used there was another woman on this protest i was watching talking about her, her how her business um is in so much trouble because she has a well and they're insisting that her well must fulfill certain regulations which are virtually bankrupting her amongst which is wanting to force chlorine into the well oh my god so this is saturn in pisces right. okay and we have him there until next year um is there, is, I, I, is there any good news there well what i'm showing you is the landscape yes y yes there yes. is good news because um we also have uranus in taurus and jupiter in taurus so uranus is the planet of revolution okay taurus is the planet of the land the farmers the hobbits. Now you can see what's happening the here. The hobbits, exactly. So I'm using the hobbits because I always think about um, that for those who read The Lord of the Rings, at the end, when the heroes return home, the heroes, the hobbits, the small people who really just want to live a quiet life and are considered to be lazy and unimportant by um, their betters. Useless um, eaters. You useless might say. eaters, you might say. Very good. Um, so they return, and they they the the shire has been basically taken over. There there are trees that have been cut down. People are living in poverty where there's clearly no reason to because it's been a bumper year mm. um, for for crops, etc. And they're looking around, and everyone's really really frightened. And then. Because they've just been on this huge quest and they're emboldened and they say, well, you know, wh why are you all, you know, and the minute they, they come in and they say, well, what are you all doing? The people rise up and it's the, the chapter is called the scouring of the, of the Shire. And I think this is Uranus in Taurus. Now, Uranus in Taurus, this, it's like uh, what we've had is... Um, an attack on nature, if you think about it. Um, everything. I, I, one of the most shocking things I remember when the Biden administration came in was seeing them proudly uh, announce that they now had combat suits for pregnant women. I felt sick. Combat? What do they think the babies are going to do? Come out and bash them or something? It, it's, you know, to, to the thought that women would be in combat situations, willingly, as part of, because, you know... Oh, I see, so, so this oh, is, I see. pregnant so this women is, going into battle. Your, your career no longer needs to be hampered by your pregnancy because we have combat suits. Now, I remember being shocked, you know, because the thought that a pregnant woman is not going to be considered to be special and protected... Yes. It's, it's, it goes to the heart of the sanctity of life. And we now, of course, have the wonderful Elon Musk uh, talking about how we're not going to need to be pregnant anymore. And this is a huge liberation for women because we're actually just going to have uh, artificial wombs. 
You're, um, you're using the word wonderful there, I'm assuming, describing Elon <laughs> Musk with irony. I think you'll have to uh, <laughs> judge for yourself. Um, but it's, it's just extraordinary. This is an attack on nature. Yes. And consequently, we have people looking at this and going, you're doing this in the name of the environment. You're telling us that we must be confined to quarters because we are destroying the environment, that we can no longer eat the things we have always eaten that come from the earth and are raised on the earth because of the environment. Um, and yet, look at what's happening. Yes. There is an actual attack by those people on everything that is natural, whether it's natural medicine, natural birth, yes. natural whatever it is, there is an attack. And it is the use of technology. So it's in their minds, they are revolutionizing nature because nature is limiting us. Well, they're so gods. This is, that, I think they think they are gods. They're certainly they? aspiring in that direction or believing that they mm. are so. So this is, this is a revolution of against nature, which is what's waking up the humble hobbits who are the average person who's going, what do you mean I can't eat meat? Yes. And who are you to tell me what I can eat? I mean, you've been telling me not to eat salt and sugar and I've ignored it. What makes you think I'm going to listen to this now? Yes. And, and more to the point, the farmers, because we now have the, the slogan that's widely used, no farmers, no food. And what would ever make a farmer get up and become a revolutionary? Yeah. Uranus in Taurus. Now, the last time Uranus was in Taurus was during the war. Think the about Second it. World war. The Second World War. Yes, sorry. The Second World War. We had the requisition of land for military purposes. Yes. We had the requisition of property for military purposes. Some of it returned, some of it not. Um, and of course, on the continent, the Nazis were busy doing their own brand of requisitioning. And we know that there are many Swiss coffers still holding art that was stolen by the Nazis from the Jews. So this, you see, the repetition. We have the Welsh farmers now in this country uh, protesting because, as I understand it, the government, the Welsh government is saying 20% of their land is now going to them. And so 20% for rewilding. And maybe you might scratch your head and go, oh, well, maybe. But then, 20 per but then the other 10%, so 10% for rewilding, 10% for the government to decide what it's going to do with. Well, I mean, you may say that in, in Wales, but in Cornwall, I've heard that they're going to obliterate farming altogether. In Cornwall, uh, Cornwall has definitely um, been highlighted as a place for rewilding. So, so this is what makes the hobbits <laughs> get up and that's Uranus and Taurus and right now we have Jupiter and Taurus as well and Jupiter is magnifying all of these issues and at the same time it's about freedom there is it Jupiter is all about freedom and when it is done in Taurus and goes into Gemini it will be all about communication and transport so we know that that is another area that is um, up for grabs, shall we say, <laughs> or being challenged, the right to the freedom of movement yes. and the right to freedom of speech. And we've seen, we've seen the early stages of the, of the whole of the, um, the transport thing with the ULES, the, the low, um, the air zones. Exactly. And um, m m more stuff coming out um, something called uh, Detroit, I think it's called, which is a new way in London and others, I think a paper mile type. Ah, uh, yes, the, the, the recent revelation of documents that have been shown that it doesn't matter what administration comes in in London in May, it's going to be pay for mile, folks. Yes. So Jupiter um, in Gemini, and, and that I think, will be replicated for every big city, of course. You know. So Jupiter in Gemini, I think, is going to be highlighting a lot of those issues. And finally, I just want to 
say I don't I have no idea where we are with time we've well, got 10 more minutes 10 more minutes yeah, great 10 more okay minutes if we stick so, to the, uh, the, uh, the 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 sort of holy hour the holy hour <laughs> so um what I would also say is that Chiron is a planet that is linked with um wounds and healing Chiron, the healing I've ones not heard of Chiron. so this is not officially a planet it is uh I, there's different definitions for these captured comets asteroids you know but in but we do work with it because it is very pertinent it's an archetype that's very pertinent and again we have seen patterns and synchronicities since its discovery in 1977 so it's fairly recent right so um in the sign of aries this is quite an important one because it's its orbit is uh, extremely elliptical, which means that sometimes it goes very quickly through some signs, and then it, as it orbits around the sun, it stays in some signs for a very long time because right. it's an extreme elliptical orbit. When it's in Aries, it is actually quite a long period in, um, that it's there. And I'm just looking at my notes to remember, 2019 it went in, and it's there till 2026. So Aries is about our independence, our personal sovereignty. It's about individuality. And it's also about courage and the ability to stand up um, and not be afraid. So obviously we're in a time where the word conscription is being bandied about rather lightly, I think. And where our own personal sovereignty has been wounded because there is nothing more wounding than the forced tampering of our body tampering of our bodies yes. tampering with our yes. bodies so this is a wound and i think this is a time and particularly because there there is another uh, element which is linked with destiny and fate that is also in aries coming together with chiron this year and so I think it's a time in which we are really going to collectively have to make a choice about how we are going to stand up for ourselves and our personal sovereignty, our perhaps even national sovereignty, and do it in a way that is not going to take us into open conflict. Yes. I that's think that's the what challenge. people are worried about because they don't want martial law. They don't want the police coming out um, with guns and those sort of things. Um, and it has to be honourable and peaceful. It has to be honourable and peaceful if we want to avoid the traps that are set for us now, but that are set for us, you know, in terms of where we want to go in the future as, as humanity. So I think what I would say, and I am not alone in saying this, but it's my therapist's hat I've got on at the moment, is we need to attend to ourselves so that we can clean up our speech and we can clean up our act, not in the censorship woke way, but understand that one thing that they do have right is that words are powerful and they are powerful in the way that we use them with others and in our own personal chat with ourselves. Yes. So when I say clean up our act, that's ultimately what I'm talking about. So, so stay uh, positive. But, yeah, yes, I was just going to say as an example is often people sort of go, oh, I can't do this or I feel awful or um, and they they put themselves into the negative rather than exactly. When we do that, we are disempowering ourselves and we are also colluding with those who would make us small. Right. So I think if we're talking about personal healing, if we're, you know, if we're talking about healing the world, we have to talk about personal healing and we have to understand that we are, as a species, contrary to what we're being told. We are amazing. We have tremendous ingenuity, tremendous creativity, a, a huge capacity for love. 
Yes, it's true. We have a huge capacity for evil. We have a huge capacity for good. And if we focus on that and work together and that, remember that we are, we are much more than useless feeders. Absolutely. Then we are embracing that healing energy and reminding ourselves of what we can do. We can link arms and step into the Pluto in Aquarius energy, which is about union and positive grassroots movement. You know, what I always feel is a choir takes many individual voices. And choirs don't just begin to sing in harmony. They, they have to rehearse and they have to practice because each voice needs to learn how to contribute in harmony with the others. But, with, but each voice is important. So yes, there is currently a cacophony of voices as, they, as we try to figure out how to move forward. Mm. Empowering those who would disempower us. Let's not be afraid of the cacophony, but instead open our ears to it because we will, once we do that, start to hear those strains of harmony coming in and we can start moving towards that choir. Each individual being s sacred, but each individually, individual contributing to that beautiful music. Wow. In the last... Um, just looking at the clock there, uh, in the last couple of minutes then, um, with all those potentials, what's your um, feeling, your gut feeling for the, the future over the next couple of years? Astrology aside, my feeling is that we are on the cusp of something amazing. It's difficult because those who would be changing our lives by force also believe that they're creating another world. Which vision do we choose? Now, I think and feel that it comes back to what I said to you earlier. It's not the vision, it's the means the ends do not justify the means ever. And in actual fact, Pluto in Aquarius, for all the challenges it brings us about unity and moving forward together and how we use technology, one thing is clear. It's about power and Aquarius is about the people. So the challenge for us, I think, is not going to be to overcome, but it's what we do when we overcome. Gosh, and I wonder how many people are thinking about that. You know, they're so in the moment of just fighting off all the nonsense that's coming, but have they given that, the, you know, assuming we win all of this or we push back and we're there, what do we do with it? And that's the, that's we the have challenge. To, we have to be at, that's going to be, the, I think, the biggest challenge because there's going to be so much pain, so much anger, and we must work. And that's again, we clean up our act yes. so that we have the compassion required to create something much more beautiful. Well, we've come to the end of the hour, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a fascinating hour. Um, wasn't quite sure if we were going to be talking about sun signs and the horoscopes and all of that, but it's actually been um, very interesting on how these planets make such a, an interest and a specific, especially how things in the past have come back, these patterns that um, repeat themselves, which I suppose gives you that empirical evidence that there is, you, you know, something in it. I mean, for, I mean, you've been doing it for 20 odd years or 30 years. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I, it would be interesting to see the comments that you put, uh, any experience, of course. You, you may well be uh, astrologers yourselves and you may want to add something or challenge things as people do. 
But um, uh, Anna Isabel, thank you so much for coming in. You're very welcome. I, I just want to, if, if it's, it's okay to say mm. that, if people want to learn astrology, they can find me. <laughs> yes, well, and I was I, going to say, the yes. next part is, uh, how do people find you? Uh, have you got a website? I do. Uh, it is lifeastrologer.com. Uh, so that's lifeastrologer, uh, all one word, dot com. And um, you, you can learn astrology. You can um, contact me for anything else that you might you know, be interested in because I also have a YouTube channel about astrology. Oh, yes, astrology. that's right. Yes, you said. Uh, yes. So, we'll, give so me, uh, um, we'll make sure the links are all in the description as normal. What's your YouTube channel called? It's actually Life Astrologer Life as Astrology. well. So, yeah, so, um, nice so if people easy. know astrology and want to know more, that that's a, a good, um, Fantastic. good thing yeah. to do. I'm sure people will be tuning in in huge numbers. I hope so. And learning more because you'll be presumably updating what the planets do. Yes. Because they seem to do things... I mean, when I've seen other people doing it, they sort of do things. That's right. You know, quite weekly, and, and yeah, there's. We've only been talking. We've we've just been talking about the long term trends, and then there's the the everyday stuff, which yes. is all the other planets like Venus, Mars, and. Do you do um, personal readings for I people do. as well? Yes, so absolutely. You do their own birth charts. Yes. And so yes, I mean, people can find me on Life Astrologer, but if you're interested in other things, there's also my Life Hypnosis uh, website. And in terms of spirituality, I have um, a YouTube channel called In the Light, Growing Your Soul, wow. uh, which okay. we explore lots of different um, aspects of spirituality. So it's, it's, it's very exciting. I, um, all of this. I would love to do a conversation with you about hypnosis because many, many years ago I used to do a bit of hypnosis and it would be fascinating to um, find out what, I mean, I'm talking about 30 years ago now um, and, and maybe even more than that actually because I was in my 20s. I'd be interested to know how hypnosis and the thoughts and things about the subconscious and the hypnotic suggestion and all that, how that, <coughs> excuse me, how that really works for us but anyway time has unfortunately run out thank you so much um yeah. anna annabelle anna isabel um i'll be back of course with um very many more monologues and of course wonderful interviews but in the meantime from uh, anna isabel and myself thanks for watching and until next time i've got to find the stop button now which is somewhere over here um take care from us both bye bye